it's Kyle here and I'm very excited to do an annual video I do on the channel and that is looking back at some of my favorite books I read in the previous year. So today's video I'll be focusing on my favorite nonfiction books that I read in 2020. Now to be clear I'm not saying these books were actually published in 2020. In many cases they were published way before 2020. It just happened I read them in 2020. So um, and I'll go five to one and to uh, start the list will be um, Hamilton by Richard Celia. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. Uh, this is more of an illustrated history. It's not uh, like a full-on, in-depth, like massive nonfiction history book. It focuses on a lot more on kind of like brief overviews and giving the highlights of Hamilton's life. Um, I have read the uh, the uh, book that the um, musical is based on. Um, actually, read that several several years ago, <laughs> way before the musical came out. It's one of my favorite uh, nonfiction books I've ever read. This book, by no means, has any info in there that goes beyond anything mentioned in that book. So, if you're looking for a really in depth look at Alexander Hamilton, one of America's founding founders, if you're not familiar with him. This is not the book for you. But if you're more of like casually interested in Hamilton, maybe you've seen the musical but you've never actually read anything about Hamilton, this is probably a good book for you. The parts of the book I actually enjoyed were some of the, uh, let me find a couple of examples. There are some like really interesting like historical imagery included in here um, that is um, very neat. Especially there were some like political cartoons that I've never seen before that we're very interested in giving you a, an interesting look at the history of that time. So, um, Hamilton by Richard Celia was my number five favorite nonfiction book that I read in 2020. Number four is another founding father, and uh, actually a, a big rival of Alexander Hamilton, John Adams. And the book is John Adams by David McCullough. Uh, this book, um, some people have seen the HBO uh, miniseries that this book inspired. I've actually never seen the miniseries, so I can't speak if that's good or not. Um, this was actually one of the last books I read in 2020, and I really, really enjoyed it a lot. Very interesting look at John Adams. I've never read a book specifically just on John Adams before. Really enjoyed it. Really loved the first half of the book. The first half of the book really kind of explores um, Adams' career, um, leading up to the Revolutionary War and kind of post-Revolutionary War period and that period of his life, like the author does a really great job of looking at it in depth. And the part of the book I didn't really enjoy quite as much is uh, the book that focuses on his presidency, because John Adams was the second president, and kind of like his life post-presidency. I kind of felt like the author didn't really go as in depth to that part of the history that as I would have enjoyed. Um, also, I think part of that's because my uh, academic background is I have a degree in political science, so I really enjoy looking at that type of stuff, and I've actually <laughs> studied that stuff in a lot of detail, and I feel like he's kind of skimmed it a lot, and um, I really would have enjoyed a lot more in-depth look at that part of Adam's life, and that's why it's ranked four. I think if the second half of the book had been as good as the first book for me, this probably would have been my favorite nonfiction book that I read in 2020, but like I said, Enjoyed the first half a lot, but it was great. Second half of the book was just okay to good. I'm not saying it was bad or anything like that. I still really enjoyed the second half. It's just not nearly as much as the first half. But if you're really interested in like early American history, maybe you've never read a book about John Adams, maybe you've seen the HBO miniseries, I would really recommend um, this book for you. David McCullough is one of the more respected nonfiction history writers. Um, he's wrote a lot of great work, so I would definitely encourage you to read John Adams by David McCullough. Number three is uh, Johnny Cash, The Life by Robert Hilburn. I actually got this book in Nashville, uh, I guess about a year and a half, two years ago. Um, I was uh, kind of um, strolling around the uh, very popular, uh, I can't even think of the name of the street in Nashville that has all the music bars and stuff like that. I was there with some friends. They were going into a lot of those music bars. I don't really drink, and I actually don't really like noisy indoor music that's really packed in. So I was just more like was strolling around the street, kind of like people watching. And uh, there was a few retail stores I'd go into because they weren't nearly as crowded. And one was kind of like a 
a record store, and they actually had a decent little um, section on um, what nonfiction books about big country musicians. Um, and Johnny Cash is probably my favorite country artist. Really enjoy him. He's one of my favorite artists. Period. And I've always been interested in his life. I really love the movie Walk the Line, but I've never read a book about Johnny Cash. In fact, um, this is really the first book I've ever read specifically about a musician before. And I found this book very fascinating. Uh, the author does a great job of kind of exploring all aspects of his life. Uh, he also does a good job of not glossing over the negative parts of Johnny Cash's life. And a lot of times with biographies, they'll kind of focus a lot on either the positive aspects of somebody's life and play it up and kind of downplay the negative parts, or they'll go the opposite and they're really, you know, ignore the positive parts and really hammer in on the negative aspects to try to paint the person in a bad life. I think this author, Robert Hilburn, does a great job of highlighting, you know, here's what made Johnny Cash special. These are the reasons why he was so su successful, the parts of his personality that kind of led to that, his amazing talent. But at the same time, he kind of led to, here's the aspect of his personality that led him to make so many bad mistakes in his life. It really cost him a lot of success, a lot of personal relationships, shortened his life. Um, it was a very interesting book that I really enjoyed. So I would say if you really big into music if you really like country music but i think if you enjoy music in period because one thing this book does point out johnny cash has such a huge influence not only just country music but also rock and roll in the early kind of like the 50s 60s era he's such a huge influence of all the music that comes after him and his career is so long um, lasting um, up until like you know great covers he did like of hurt he continued to impact the music scene in america and the world up until he passed away um, and it's a, this book is a very fascinating look at one of the more influential figures in music history in the 20th century. So I really encourage you to check out Johnny Cash by Robert Hilburn if that kind of topic sounds interesting to you. Number two, and this was my favorite nonfiction book for most of the year, because <laughs> as you'll see, the, the number one spot was actually the very last book I read in 2020 and claimed the, the number one spot right then. Uh, but number two is The Rise of Athens, The Story of the World's Greatest Civilization by Anthony Evert. Um, I've read a ton of books about Rome, um, the Roman Republic, the Roman Empire, but I've never read a specific book that really focused on the history of Athens. Um, you know, I've read a lot of books that will focus kind of a little bit on it. Um, again, I mentioned <laughs> my background is in political science, so I took a lot of classes to focus on ancient political philosophy. So. Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, all that type of stuff, but those are focused on more of their philosophy and those individuals, not necessarily the history of Athens. But from a lot of the stuff I read, I, I was kind of generally aware of a lot of the big events in Athens history, but not a lot of the more specific stuff and not really in that much detail. So I was very excited to read this book, and I really enjoyed it a lot. I would say if you're very curious about like ancient history in the era of Rome, but you've never read much about other cities or political entities from that era, this is a very interesting book to read because a lot of stuff that happened in Athens heavily influences Rome and um, Athens in general had a huge role in influence what comes along later with modern Western civilization. Um, so I really enjoyed it. I would say this is not a book, if you're just like casually interested in history, I don't think you'll really enjoy this book because this book gets really very much into the weeds. I think you have to be a really big history nerd to really enjoy this. But if you're a history nerd and this period of history interests you, I think you'll love this book, The Rise of Athens, The Story of the World's Greatest Civilization by Anthony Abbott. Number one, as I mentioned, the last book I read in 2020 claimed the number one spot in my nonfiction favorite list. That is uh, Cornelius Rhine's uh, A Bridge Too Far. Uh, this is actually a book I got a few years ago in a, um, a Friends of Library used book sale. And a lot of times the books I get in those events um, kind of make it to the end of my to-be-read list. A lot of times when I buy newer books, they kind of move more towards the front. So I've been meaning to read this for a couple of years and just kept on never making it to my book in my little stack. Like, oh, this is the next book I'm going to read. Uh, but finally, in 2020, I got to it. Really enjoyed it. I've heard of A Bridge Too Far for a long time. It's a very famous nonfiction book written, I believe it came out in the 60s, if I remember correctly, uh, about Operation Market Garden, which is a big operation during World War II. If you're not familiar with World War II history, basically, not too long after the D-Day invasion at Normandy, uh, 
the Western Allies are trying to figure out a way they can end the war as quickly as possible. And this idea is hit upon to kind of use a huge um, paratrooper um, aerial drop into the Netherlands to kind of skip ahead of the front and kind of look for, almost like for a back door to Germany and hopefully end the war before the end of 44. Um, it's a very famous military operation if you're really into World War II. For people that are not really into World War II history, you might not be familiar with it. Um, but it is a very fascinating military operation. And all the individuals involved with it, Montgomery, Eisenhower, um, the various huge German military leaders that are involved, um, some of the more influential German military leaders, a lot of times we overshadow just because everybody kind of focuses on Hitler. His generals a lot of times are not well known in today's history. Uh, but the thing I really enjoyed about this book is the author, because when he wrote this book, a lot of the generals were still alive, a lot of the foot soldiers who survived the war were still alive, and he did a ton of interviews with these people. So the book is through, throughout, he, now he's been looking at the events and kind of going through the records, but he'll sprinkle in quotes from actually soldiers and generals and other officers, and like, this is what they were thinking about at this time, you know, their personal experiences. And it makes the book very fascinating. It's, it's a type of nonfiction book about World War II that you can no longer write, because those figures are just... They've been dead for a while now. But this period of history was like almost a perfect time to write this book because the people involved were still alive, but they'd had time to kind of reflect on it and kind of come to grips to what would happen and kind of give their perspectives on the events. Um, it is a very fascinating book. And I should say there's quotes from both sides. There's British, Americans, Dutch, um, Germans, um, even some Polish because the Poles were involved in this operation. It is a very fascinating book. So if you're interested in the history of World War II, I would strongly recommend A Bridge Too Far by Cornelius Ryan. It is a very fascinating look at one of the more interesting operations in World War II, especially on the Western Front. So those are my five favorite uh, nonfiction books I read on 2020. I'll be doing another video focusing on my five favorite fiction books, so just keep an eye out for that. In the comment section below, please let me know what are some great nonfiction books that you read in 2020. I'd be very interested to in see what some of your uh, nonfiction highlights for the year were. As always, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate the support. And um, happy reading in 2021. See you next time.